this is going to be a very fun video because the characters that we have in this video are actually super interesting. I was browsing around in the morning like every social media person does, wakes up in the morning, browses through the notifications and stuff. I was on Facebook because generally in the morning I check if there are some kind of posts I need to answer to, like, you know, for the students who are enrolled in the big academy and so on, and if there are like some other general notifications. So it showed up on my Facebook ad. So what I do is like, of course, we are a marketing consulting company, essentially. So Brandavice is the main company where we do most of our business. And that is a marketing consulting company. And every single one of us like have studied marketing or graphic designing. So of course, like, you know, Germany is still a place which many people are not aware of. And that's why like we also like, you know, put out some Facebook ads so that more people know about this idea that, yes, you do not have to stay in the country where you're born in. You can also like, you know, move away and you can choose a better lifestyle. And this guy, who is actually also joining my Facebook group um, since I think a month or something is following me on Instagram is following Alina and stuff and he's commenting on the Facebook ad and like such a funny comment if you're so skilled why are you taking refuge in Romania why are you not able to manage cost of living in Germany with your hi-fi skills <laughs> so first of all I think like all of us know like the, the kind of people who speak in this particular tone in India. There are a few very interesting things here. So first of all, like, you know, the story of like us moving to Romania has never been a secret. So like we post about it on Instagram. I've talked about it multiple times on my other channel, Brand Device. And Alina has made a video about it too. So it would have made sense like if you're hiding it or something and like, you know, we're not talking about it because apparently this was something that, you know, many people didn't know about. So I decided to make this video here too and discuss it directly just in the German way. So here's the story for the people who are new to this. In 2014, I came for a conference to Germany in Friedrichshafen, and that's where I met Alina. And, you know, Alina and I, we were like, you know, still talking at that time, we were dating. And then in 2015, I came to Germany in Berlin. I did my internship there for three months. Then afterwards in 2016, I moved to Germany full-time for my studies. Of course, I tried structural engineering because my background is from civil engineering. I did my bachelor's in Dikras Murtel, a lovely university. It's like almost in a village or something right next to the GT road. I did that. Then afterwards I was like, okay, after civil engineering, the thing that make the most sense is doing structural engineering because again, you're paid very well there. And I was like, okay, let me try this out. I started studying. The first month was very horrible because I was in a German taught program. And I've told people over and over again that German taught programs are not easy, but they are 100% worth it. Like I would still not choose any other program. Let's say if you're going for an English taught program, the people you are studying with are again people from India, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, Pakistan, and so on. So you do not really get to know the German culture. You do not like have German colleagues. And if you have any, like it's just very rare. But on the other hand, if you go for a German taught program, you learn everything the German way. And the possibility that there are going to be, let's say, other non-EU students in your program is very, very less. I remember in my program, I think it was just me and like there was one American student and that's it. Like we were in the German taught program. And this is the story of the program I shifted to next, which is called Internationales Wirtschaftsingenieurwesen. This is a master's program again. It is bilingual bilingual like you know in quotations because essentially 94 percent of the subjects that i still wrote were in german only six percent of the subjects were in english it was essentially a german thought program and it also worked out really well because i was more interested in marketing than i was interested in civil engineering so that's how the story started in 2017 i started my youtube channel I got into more social media marketing. I was understanding how everything works. In 2018, I started Big Academy. Then 2019 was a very interesting year for us because that was when I was writing my master thesis, which was increasing sales of digital products with marketing 4.0. And exactly during that time, I was able to hire a business coach. Now, this business coach costed me around 6,000 US dollars. And that was at our time, like when we were like, you know, uh, still students, like Alina was working full time in the Indian consulate in Hamburg. And I was still a student. That was our quarter of the yearly like salary. And that is like, you know, before taxes get deducted. So this is crazy. But we wanted to take this leap because we wanted to change something. Every single decision that we have taken in our life, is so that we can jump towards something better. In 2019, we bought a house on the island in Denmark, which is called Aero. And our house, we named it as Aero Diaries. You can learn more about it on aerodiaries.com. So like we did that and that was like another leap for us because we were like, okay, like we have tried the city life and stuff. Let's try how like it is to live on an island. 
So we moved there, we started our business. So we started renting out the house on Airbnb. Alina started marriage consulting. So marriage planning for people who are from two different countries because just like it was super difficult for me and Alina to get married in Germany, we knew that this is a problem and like we can solve this problem for many other people. So we started doing that too. And we had some really nice clients. They are like super happy with our work and like they also like, you know, tell other people about it. So that is like super nice. And um, that was how like, you know, 2019 ended and 2020, we did exactly that. But what happened towards the end of 2020 was the business really picked up. Now, previously, like, you know, I was earning something like what a normal employee in Germany would earn. That was the story in 2019. So of course, like no complaints whatsoever. I started my business in Germany. I registered my business in Germany. I paid my taxes in Germany, right? But in 2020, when the business blasted, um, it turned out that we had to like pay somewhere around 116,000 euros just in taxes. So the problem with many companies in Germany, especially like which are growing up, is that if you do not have a lot of money, you cannot hire good lawyers, you cannot hire good tax consultants. And that means you're always in struggle with the public authorities in Germany. That means you have paperwork to file. And for example, when I was hiring Garima as my full-time employee, like the amount of paperwork that I had to do, like it was just crazy. So like I did not know about these things previously as a business owner because I was just doing everything on my own till that time. So bureaucratic stuff is a lot if you are a business owner, but most of the people who come to Germany as students, they are doing employment afterwards. So like for them, they don't have to do anything. All of the paperwork and everything is taken care of by the side of the business. So what's the story here about like, you know, not being able to manage living in Germany or like not manage the cost of living. So it is not that we cannot manage the cost of living in Germany. The point is that the taxes that I'm paying at my income bracket is 45%. Now, what do I mean by income bracket? So let me show you two examples. First is the one of a person who comes to Germany for masters and is really good at their masters and earns like, you know, decent amount. So decent amount in Germany is like around 5,000 euros a month. So if you take a look at that, this is the German government website. I will also put the link in description so that you can check it yourself. So for 60,000 euros per year, you will be paying just around 26% in taxes. Now, again, this is lesser than what you would pay in India because in India, the highest income tax bracket is 30%. So 26%, nice. Now, if I, for example, after my civil engineering and structural engineering masters would have started a job, I would be just earning around 3,300 euros per month. So in that case, this is the story. This is just 20%, 20.83%. So this also comes out to just around 8,000 euros um, in a year in taxes. Now let's take the last example because of which I decided that strategically it doesn't really make sense to like, you know, continue the business in Germany anymore. This is the example when you're earning around 500,000 euros in a year. And the taxes that you're paying here is 43.81%. So you're paying almost half of your money away in taxes. So I just don't understand how it makes sense because as an entrepreneur, you're working 24 seven. I do not remember the last time I took holidays. I'm working on Saturdays. I'm working on Sundays. I'm working from Monday till Friday. I have to train my team right now. So I have to wake up at seven. I work till 11 and the same thing goes on over and over again from Monday till Sunday. If I get sick, there's nobody who is going to pay me money. If I stop uploading videos on YouTube, if I stop doing my marketing consulting, there's nobody who is going to say, all right, you're sick, we understand that, but hey, still like, you know, take our money or something. Nope, doesn't work like that. As an employee, you have it like much easier. So that's a different story there. So you're having all of these disadvantages as a business owner. And on top of that, like you have to pay so much taxes and you essentially are working three days or four days, yeah, three days in a week, for the government and you're working four days, um, the rest of the four days for yourself. But that's not true because you're working seven days a week. So this was the key point which pushed us towards moving to Romania because in Romania right now, we're just having 1% tax. That means on 500,000 euros, we pay in taxes just 5,000 euros. Now, again, there are so many people who are like, yeah, you shouldn't avoid taxes, blah, blah. But the thing is like when you would come in a stage like me yourself, you will understand that. Like I've been in different stages of life. You know, I was a student. I made videos about it. Like you guys really loved it. 
I was sharing my part-time, like, you know, student job experiences and so on. You guys also loved it. On Brand Device, we have a completely different kind of audience, every one of which is super interested in business and entrepreneurship and, you know, like, just uh, building wealth. So that is something that people resonate with our decision of moving to Romania. So if you think about it, for us to live one year in Germany and pay 43% taxes, for the same amount, we can live 43 years in Romania. And if that would be the case, I would be at 69 years of age. And that's how much taxes I would pay in Romania compared to Germany. So again, this is a strategic decision and we moved. And that's why we are able to hire like, you know, 10 people. Now, like the team will go to 11. We are able to provide them jobs in such difficult times. So of course, like everybody has their own story and like people like these who are just sitting in their mother's basement or something. And like their parents are doing everything for them and just are typing stuff from the keyboard. They wouldn't understand it. But I have the responsibility of 11 plus Alina and I, 13 people on me. So, of course, I will make the best decision that comes to my mind. Germany is still something I really believe in. You know, like even if I would be in US, I would still promote Germany because first of all, I also still don't understand why people go to US with the hiring and firing culture that they have. And also the lottery system for green card. You could work in US for 10, 15, 20 years and you would still not know if you are able to live here permanently or not. So I don't understand why people like put themselves in such kind of like, you know, insecurity and also like, you know, just starting a business and stuff in US as a foreigner, it's more difficult. In Germany, on the other hand, you do two years of full-time work after your master's or bachelor's is done in Germany and you're eligible for permanent residency. And it also doesn't take one and a half year to like apply for the PR in Canada. For example, my younger brother right now, he's struggling with that. In Germany, you get your uh, residence permit card, the permanent residency card just in one month. So I've gone through it, so I know it. And things are like, you know, much simpler. In two years, you are eligible for applying for the permanent residency. There's no lottery system. So I also do not understand this. So I could be in US, UK, Canada, Australia, whatsoever. I'm still going to promote Germany because that is the country I believe the most in right now. Germany still makes the most financial sense. Like it's the financially smartest decision you can make to come to Germany and study. If you're an employee, you can do your employment there. The work regulations are nice. You work from Monday to Friday and Saturday, Sunday is off. So you can like take benefit from all of these things. Why not? And it is an EU. That means if you want to move to any other country afterwards, you can still do that. For example, we moved to Romania because we wanted to grow our business. I do not believe in like taking money from investors and stuff like to grow the company. This is something I will never do. I think like I will let my business close or something before I do that because I do not like the feeling of owing somebody some money so that they can dance around on my head. This is, I think, the worst feeling. And this is also the main reason why we did not buy our house on credit. We did not take a loan for it. We bought it like, you know, we saved for it and we bought the house. So this is what I believe in. There are different points in life where you have to be at different places. So you have to keep this in mind. Not one country is going to serve all of your purposes. You have to pick and choose. And then you have to make the decision of actually moving. There are so many people, even in Germany right now, they feel like, okay, they do not like the tech system or something. And they're earning a lot of money. They want to move, but they will never move because they will never have the courage to move. You need to leave a very like, you know, comfortable life and stuff every single time when you're like making a move because... Once you make a move, the next two to three months are just in settling things down and like, you know, working out the paperwork and everything. But this is what I like about Alina and I, that every single time we make a decision, we are super quick with that. And we are very business oriented people. So we see an opportunity, we jump on it, we start working towards it and we work a lot. Like, I think this is something that I'm like super proud of. That is something that like really like stands us apart. There are some people like, you know, who get lucky with like their YouTube channels blasting and something, but you see that this is also not the case for us. From YouTube, I think we are making just around like 1000 euros per month and from all of the channels combined. So YouTube is not our main business. Like we make these videos because we love making these videos because this is the entire point of YouTube that whatever is happening in your life that you're able to share it with the people who are following you. And I also really believe in being super honest and transparent. So. That's the reason like, you know, I kind of like lay out all of these things in front of you. We do not like, you know, hide things and we are doing, we are going to a different country or something like that. We don't care. For us, it is not a big deal. We are still going to go to Germany because our family is there. We are still going to make trips. We are still going to do our Germany tour that we had in our mind for 2020, but screwed up because of the entire pandemic situation. So we are going to do all of these things. We are not worried about it. But I'm just making this video so that like people like these do not just bother other people and like, you know, stop them from taking their first step towards like actually 
thinking of a better life for themselves. Now, thinking about a better life for yourself, um, you know that you have to learn German. And I, I kid you not, like, if you want to come to Germany, you can come for an English taught program and you can hope that you find a job after your English taught program in an English speaking MNC or something. All good with that. Many people do it. But many people also struggle, especially in finding internships and part-time jobs. And that's why I say you have to learn German if you want to live a really good life in Germany. If you don't learn German, it is not going to work out. So you have to really focus on that. I did that when I was um, in India already in the last year of my bachelor's and it worked out pretty well. I had to give test stuff again, even in 2016 in Bucharest, because all of the seats in India were full, all of the seats in Germany were full for test stuff exam. So I was like, you know, where are the seats available? Where can I fly right now? So uh, Bucharest was an option. I gave the exam and if you see on the screen, I was able to get first what uh, around 5533 three score. But then afterwards, I applied for reconsideration because I was like, you know, this is like not real because I believe my speaking was better. So I applied for reconsideration and it costed 40 euros. But afterwards, you see like my speaking became four. So I have five, five, four, three now, 17 points out of 20, which is a nice score. I'm happy about it. And what happens in situations like these, when you apply for reconsideration and the number actually gets changed, they transfer the 40 euros back to you. So I actually did not lose anything at all. Now, again, all of these are experiences that I'm sharing with you, which nobody else will because nobody else has gone through it. I'm trying all of these different things because at the end of the day, we are going to have a better and interesting story to share with you if we are taking so many different decisions and we are sharing with you. Now, just to like, you know, build on the test stuff thing, I was like, you know, I did my master's in German thought. I gave presentations in German. I wrote assignments in German and it was like reading literature and all of this stuff in German. So I was like, my skills should be at C2 level. So <laughs> what I did was now, because we are no longer living on the island, I just registered for a C2 exam at the Kyoto Institute again in Bucharest, just like in 2016. So for me personally, it feels like, you know, coming back a full circle because the things kind of started in Bucharest with me writing the test staff exam and clearing it and getting 17 points afterwards to now me writing the C2 exam. I hope it works out. I'm like, kind of like really looking forward to it. But I'm not getting the time to prepare at all. Like, it's just me like training my employees right now and me taking care of the business. Because if you have 11, 12, 13 people like, you know, working for you, you have to make sure that you also like, you know, make enough sales or like you're approaching enough companies, you're sending out enough proposals that at the end of the day, you're able to pay every single one of them off. And also if they do good work, you're able to pay them the bonuses. Like I pay bonuses all the time because sometimes people come up with such interesting ideas or such interesting stuff that I'm like, hmm, this is something that should be rewarded. So that's the thing, like, you know, I have my things to take care of and I'm taking care of them very well. And I have like no regrets whatsoever there other than like maybe I can work more, but I just have 24 hours in a day. And I think you should like approach these things in the same way that see how the life is right now where you are. Does it need a moving? You have to move somewhere or like, can you just improve the things where you are like, you know, by not moving or something? We like to take the decision of moving because we believe you can come up with so many nice stories. You can meet so many new people and so on. And you are having just like newer experiences. And this has worked out well for us. We have been honest with you and transparent with you so far. We are planning to do that in the future too. If I fail in the C2 exam, I'm going to tell you. If I like pass in the C2 exam, I'm going to tell you. So we have a lot of things planned. Stay in touch. And if you haven't yet downloaded the free PDF, basic admission requirements for studying in Germany, I will put the link for that in the description below. So thank you so much for watching. If you have any kind of questions whatsoever, let me know in the comments below and I'll see you later. One more thing, we are always looking for interesting people who can join our team, our company, Brandwise Consulting SRL. Even if you're from literature, psychology, management, business administration, any of these backgrounds, just write to us. Like, you know, we are having more and more companies, which are clients whose social media activities we have to audit or like, you know, we have to plan their ads out. We have to consult them on email marketing and things like that. So if you're into that, write to us. We are always looking forward to interesting people who can do something nice. Perfect. See you later. Bye.